There are some things in like everyday life, which like nobody notices, but I think are so fascinating. Uh, one of those is probably something so many listeners on this show have heard of, uh, and probably you too, Stephen, which is the cost of a Costco hot dog and a soda is a dollar fifty today. It was a dollar fifty ten years ago. It was a dollar fifty twenty years ago. In fact, it was a dollar fifty for thirty five years. Have you ever noticed this? Do you like the Costco food court? I love the Costco food court. I go there all the time. It's no joke. It is no joke. And like what's really interesting about this is like Costco will probably have this be a dollar fifty for the next for the next thirty five years. The next millennium. And next millennium it's going to be you're going to drive to costco in your flying car or your your flying car is going to auto drive to costco and you're going to be able to get a dollar 50 hot dog and soda and why because they know that more likely than not they can take a hit on the hot dog and soda because they know you're going to be buying 500 rolls of toilet paper <laughs> 55 gallons of uh dish detergent and enough dog food for the next three years. They just know you're going to do it because uh, they know they're going to optimize. They've optimized their store. Um, so this concept of like buying one thing. I got yeah. a Costco membership to save money, but I for sure spend way more money because I come home with everything in bulk. You cannot leave Costco for under a hundred bucks. Like you, they know what it is. I came they back with both were. of these plants from Costco, not intending come to get on. one. <laughs> Whoa, they're huge. The one's touching your ceiling. Dude, that's how Costco works, man. Yes. So this very concept of they know you're going to come in uh, for one thing and then eventually leave with a whole bunch of things. Costco has down to a science. Of course, this is not a Costco podcast, although they are a pretty interesting company. This is an Amazon podcast. And this whole concept of market basket analysis is exactly what we're talking about today. It is a relatively new report inside uh, Amazon. And we're going to be talking about it, uh, market basket analysis. I'm pretty stoked about it because this is something that has a direct link to changing and amplifying your PPC schedule, like your normal day-to-day, month-to-month list of things that you do. Guess what, my friends? It's getting one task larger today. Uh, Stephen, tell the good people uh, you know, sort of what we're going to be leading up to today. Yeah, so market basket analysis is basically the study of product bundling um, in the store, whether that's e-commerce or even you know classic brick and mortars. But it's it's studying how people view two different items that aren't necessarily competing, but are rather complementing. And how often are these two items bundled together in a single purchase? And Amazon has recently released this market basket analysis, market basket reports for brand owners on Amazon, which is why we are continuing this part, uh, part two of four for Seller Central brand analytics. Yes. Um, You know, last week we did search frequency rank, uh, which is, you know, probably one of the, probably the first report that people start looking at. Uh, And then market basket analysis is like the next one down the line. And what's really interesting about it is it, 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 I think this has one of the most direct links to doing something in your account, like doing something so that you are creating a new ad based off the information that you get here. And it's a very direct link. Uh, so that's part of the reason why I like this. Uh, and if you know everyone's been on Amazon here, everyone knows that when you're looking at a product detail page, you're looking at an individual product, you scroll down that page, boom, a whole row of sponsored products that are substitutes for the product and compliments, as well as typically some organic uh, as well. Uh, it's actually funny, when we were doing research for the show, we found an old screen cap uh, of Frequently Bought Together, where it was like an organic listing. Now I feel like all of these are like sponsored. It's like sponsored products related to this item. And that's like another way of saying like, these are purchased with the per- product that you're buying as either a substitute or a compliment. So some pretty interesting stuff there. Right. Um, but we do believe that the, uh, the, so Amazon used to have customers who bought this item also bought, and they have since gotten rid of that. At least I've not seen that in forever. Um, 
So they used to have frequently bought together and a second row, customers who bought this item also bought. Uh, but now it looks like they just have that first one, just the frequently bought together. There will usually be one or two, maybe sometimes three other products. Um, these are all products that would be, would be bundled together. So if you're shopping for, say, a yoga mat, there might also be like a yoga towel or a stretchy band or something like that. Items that kind of, you know, are in the similar similar vein of what a shopper would be looking for. Um, but we do believe those aren't those aren't sponsored products that are in the frequently bought together. That is something that Amazon is using their own sort of market basket analysis to kind of figure out which products are good combos together. And those are listed above the sponsored products related to this item where there's usually two carousels right there. It'll say like sponsored products with at least four stars and then sponsored products related to this item. Um, so we're going to be talking a little bit about some strategies for how to win that spot that's basically an organic spot, the frequently bought together spot. Yes, we're going to talk about what the market basket analysis report is, like what it actually consists of, the nuts and bolts of it, and like how to find it. Uh, and then we're going to be talking about what to do with the information inside your Amazon marketing strategy, specifically inside your PPC campaigns. And with that, let's jump into the first section of what the heck is this market basket analysis report. So to get to market basket analysis, the first thing you're going to do in Seller Central is you're going to mouse over the reports tab, uh, go down to brand analytics, click that, and then you will be taken to the consumer behavior dashboards where you see those uh, four brand analytics uh, titles that we're talking about last week and today and the next three two weeks. So uh, you'll see there, there is an, a section that is called the market basket report or market basket analysis. And if you click that, it will take you to a new page where you can, and this is Amazon's de definition, you can identify cross-selling and bundling opportunities by gaining insight on products that are being purchased together by your customers. And if you are looking in your Seller Central account uh, and you do not see this, I need a quick moment of silence because this is only available for brand registered companies. So Amazon also discusses their market basket report as a report that shows the top three products, which are most frequently purchased at the same time as the brand owner's products. Uh, so basically when you run this report, you can run it on either a quarterly, monthly, weekly, or daily time frame. So uh, let's just say you run it for monthly. We're in the month of February. So you would run for the previous month. So it would pull up um, all of your ASINs uh, for the month of January and it would show you products one, two, and three, which were the other ASINs that were most frequently bundled with your product. Now, what that means is that those products were purchased at the same time or in the same shopping cart as your product. And it will also give you uh, what is called a combination percentage, which is basically the, uh, uh, well, I'll just give you their definition, the percentage of orders that contain both your product and the other purchase product in comparison to the total number of orders that contained at least two different items, including your product. So your product has probably been purchased with other products like hundreds and hundreds of times, but not necessarily all of those items are, you know, bundling with your products. Because a lot of people, they'll just like have a shopping list and they'll be like, okay, I need toilet paper and I need a Bluetooth speaker or something like that. And so they buy both of those and they're, they're separate from each other. So and if you're the Bluetooth speaker seller, or actually let's just do the toilet paper because that's easier to think of something that you'd bundle with it. If you're the toilet paper uh, seller, um, your, your market basket report isn't going to show the Bluetooth speaker because out of all the times your product's been purchased with another product, it's only going to show the top three time, the top three products that are frequently bundled. And so they'll probably be things that are a little bit similar, um, probably like, you know, wet wipes or uh T uh, Kleenex or toothpaste. So those will be the items that are more likely to be bundled with yours. And it's probably also not going to be a, a competitor's toilet paper, if that makes sense. It's not going to be your toilet paper and another toilet paper. It's not, it's usually going to be more complimentary ASINs, not substitutes. 
Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, just like you mentioned, once you crack that open, you know, you're looking at market basket analysis. You can, you can only see your products, and you can you get the data out so you can find out what people are buying with your products in one of two ways. Like a, you can punch in the ASIN of your product, and then you can start to see the things that it gets bundled with. Or B, you could type in a keyword that triggers your products. Uh, and then you'll see your products that got triggered for that keyword and then the associated products with that. So you can kind of see this data in one of two ways by punching in your ASIN or searching uh, a keyword. And what's like a perfect example, just like you mentioned, somebody's buying toilet paper, but then they also buy, buy some tissues. It's like, boom, perfect. And most of the time when we've seen it, and I'd love for listeners to sort of get in touch with us to let us know how they've seen it so we could sort of crowdsource some of this and develop some strong trends here. Uh, but basically, yeah, a lot of times it's going to be like a compliment uh, rather than a substitute. Uh, we did see one or two examples of substitutes. Uh, and what we assume from there is like somebody's buying your product and they're buying a competitor's product to try it out. And then they're going to decide like they're going to use both and they're going to come back and buy whichever one they liked more. Yeah. So that'll be the case um, more often than not in consumables um, where maybe people are trying to try something back to back um, and see which one they like better. So if it's like protein bars, um, you know, and they really like cookies and cream. There's a few different brands. They might try a few different types of cookies and cream. Um, but I'll, I would say that would you would if you do see those, those will probably be. So when it shows you the number one, two and three purchase stations, uh, if that is showing up in your MBR, your market basket report, those will probably be not, not common. And if they are there, probably your number two or number three purchase Jason, but probably not number one. Yeah. So, so that's basically the market basket analysis report. Uh, not much to it. It just sort of tells you the combination percentage, which is the you know amount of time that that product is purchased with one of your products. So pretty straightforward. You know, we, we're, we're putting a screen cap in it where we blurred most of it because it's a, a lot of yeah, sensitive data, but we included one where people are buying an avocado 17% of the time with one of these products. So some pretty interesting insight there. And if you see like a trend like that, uh, let's jump into the second part of this episode where we're actually going to talk about six steps of how to actually take advantage of this to your favor to boost revenue and boost profits. Let's jump in to section two. So this week's strategy is going to be um, how can we use the market basket report to win that frequently bought together spot? Um, that is, you can probably think of that as basically another choice badge uh, or a bestseller badge. It's something that you kind of have to win um, by being, you know, the, the number one most frequently bundled uh, ASIN with, with whatever product is currently being viewed. Uh, but it's not really something that you can just, you know, advertise and win a sponsored product placement there. Um, so you kind of do have to win it a little bit organically. Uh, it acts as like a free advertisement for you, but we're going to be discussing sort of a strategy to how you can win that spot potentially by using your PPC advertisements. Um, I said advertisements. And weird. also get in there <laughs> for the... Uh sponsored products related to this item too, right? Correct. Yeah. And yeah. I think that's actually probably one thing important to note is the uh that frequently bought together uh listing isn't necessarily saying that your um it, it doesn't necessarily mean that someone was, you know, clicking on one product and then uh saw your product somewhere else and decided, oh yeah, I also want that. It actually just means that they were checked out at the same time, regardless of how they added either product to their cart. So if it's a person who's on like a health craze, they could have just added one healthy fruit and then did another search for like another healthy thing and did another search for another healthy thing. And they just happened to find three different products. And maybe those three products end up being purchased together a lot of the time by many customers. Um, but it's not necessarily talking about the, that like, yeah, it, it doesn't really pay any attention to the actual, I guess, the attribution of the sales and how people got there. The point is they're in the same shopping cart at checkout. Right. And we're trying to incentivize this process by getting in there. Sponsored products related to this item. So, boom, I, I feel like ideally we get that row and then we also get the organic um, 
people also purchased. Yeah. So the mm-hmm. strategy is is you want to find in order to win that spot, you basically want your product to be in the shopping cart with that product as much as possible. And the way in which we're going to try to do that is with a product targeting ad. However, there's going to be something a little bit unique about this campaign. It is going to be a product page only campaign. So we've talked about uh, we've talked about ad placements before. If you're not familiar with that, uh, go back to our previous episode where we talk about um, placements, but whether it's top of search, product pages, or rest of search. Uh, we've talked about a top of search only targeting campaign, and now we're going to be talking about a product page targeting only campaign. And your goal here is to just make it into the same shopping cart as that product as much as possible. And so the way we're going to do this is by, uh, well, Mike, why don't you walk us through the step process? Yes, step by step, here we go. So step number one, incredibly simple, go into your account, create a new manual sponsored product campaign. Pretty straightforward so far. Uh, Step two, create a product targeting ad group. So as you're going through that campaign creation, create a new product target, select that option for product targeting. And then what you're gonna do, you're gonna take those ASINs that were purchased frequently with yours, and those are gonna be your product targets. Now, I don't know if everyone knows this who's listening, but if you are targeting an ASIN, you will show up near that ASIN on the same page. That includes search results. Um, Meaning if someone's just searching for a random keyword, like so like let's say somebody's in in the example of somebody buy something with an avocado, they buy your product with an avocado. If someone is searching avocado, you may bump into low relevance, you may bump into low click-through rate, you may bump into like high CPCs if you're trying to target like the key, the search avocado. So you can show up there even if you're targeting the ASIN of that avocado. And we have a hunch and we haven't done a ton of testing on this. Uh, so again, please, please like p- play with this. But what we're assuming is that if you are targeting that avocado and you're showing up next to it in the search results, because that search result is going to be so strong, like that search intent, they're looking for an avocado. Yeah. Let's just say, actually, let's just say, for example, yeah. you're selling a banana and you want to be bundled. Right. You want to be frequently bought together with that avocado. Go ahead. Exactly. Uh, so like that might be a mismatch. Like if somebody's searching for an avocado, they might not also want a banana, but if they're looking at it, then they're looking there and they made it down to the page where they're actually viewing other products, then like that's where we want to try to get to because like that's where we can be most apt like to, to fit in here because like they're looking at the product, they're scrolling down, they're looking for, you know, matching and they're like, oh yes, I'll also need that. So I think it's a pretty interesting concept to to bid on the ASIN and have search results show up there too. But our hunch and, and, and sort of what we've seen in our very early testing is that it'll make more sense to go after the product page itself. Um, so the question there becomes in step four, we want to actually give it a low bid on that product target. So we want to bid on the avocado low, but then we want to go into our placement settings and increase the bids on product page targeting, you know, quite a bit so that we have a really strong product page uh, bid, but we have a very low search bid. Uh, so, this, so this is something that we are, are brainstorming here of like, what's going to be more valuable, we're going to be testing. Uh, and if you comment on this post, or, or just message us for an update, we're going to have more details on this. Uh, and of course, love having Badger Nation out there to also test these things. So drop us a line uh, to, to see where when you get this uh, combination targeting, you know, do you find that it converts better on product pages or in the search results? Uh, so far, early testing and our hunches tells us product pages. Um, so that's that. You want to increase the bids on that product page targeting placement. And then step six, repeat this monthly. Uh, so basically, you can get this report scheduled to you when you're looking at your market basket analysis. You can actually have this report sent to you on a monthly basis and just see if there's any new ASINs that people are buying with your products and just continue to do this, continue to build up this, you know, resume, the, the sort of uh, war chest of products that are frequently purchased with yours. Try to get as many clicks for it and many conversions for it. And then eventually, you know, we're showing up in the sponsored products related to this item through paid. And then ideally we're showing up through the 
uh, people frequently buy with organically to really maximize our visibility on that product page. And that's it. Step one through six, create that campaign, product targeting ad group, enter those ASINs of frequently bought products with yours, lower the bid on the product target itself, increase the bids on the product page, and then of course, repeat this monthly, have that report automatically sent to you. Whew, a little bit of a mouthful, Stephen. How'd I do? Hey, you did well. I think we covered oh, it. Thanks, dude. I want to add this every week. I want to add a, <laughs> a little bit more to steps four and five there, uh, just Please. as to the rationale behind um, super low bid on the product target, super high uh, increase. We're talking nine hundred percent increase on product page ad placement. Um. So, and if anyone's you know doubting the concept that like product targeting gets you on the actual can get you on the search page at the top of the search. Um, just run a sponsored brand, uh, campaign and add pr and make it a product targeting campaign and then download the search term report for that product targeting campaign. And you will see in the targeting column, it shows the ACE in your targeting. And then in the customer search term column, it shows what was the customer search term that caused your product target to appear on the search page and then therefore your sponsored product to appear on the search page. Um, so that's, that's a fact. Um, so product targeting is basically just following, it's almost stalking that ASIN wherever it may go, whether that's on the search page, whether that's on the, the product details page itself. Um, but that being said, you know, so, so yeah, so if you're targeting just say a competitor's ASIN, possible search terms that could qualify you there could be generic search terms, um, for whatever the product is, or it could be branded keywords. Uh, that, that are getting you on that page because people are searching for that brand, but you're targeting that ASIN, so you're going to appear on that page anyways. So with that being said, your actual CPCs are uh, determined by how relevant Amazon considers your product to be to the search query. So if you are selling a banana and you're targeting an avocado uh, and somebody's typing in avocado, your banana isn't super relevant. Um, so even though it may be relevant to or sorry, it may, it may be a bundleable item. Amazon may not think that the banana is relevant to the search term avocado and therefore will charge you pretty high CPCs as opposed to an avocado. So, if, you know, the avocado might cost a dollar, but yours might cost two dollars because you're not super relevant and because you're not for sure going to get the sale. Um, you know, your conversion rates might also be low. So you're probably just going to spend a lot of money if you're just, you know, showing up on the search page a lot. But yeah, like Mike was saying, if you appear on the product pages, uh, chances are your, your CPCs will be a little bit lower because Amazon will consider you relevant to that product, um, whether or not you're related to the search. And that's where we're hoping to, um, you know, when people are actually, and cause then the other thing with avocado, let me, sorry, add one more thing. Um, you may be targeting that one avocado ASIN, but maybe someone clicks on a different avocado or something like that. Um, and so they click on a different avocado and now you're going to be on that other page and not necessarily bundled with the ASIN you were trying to get. So that is uh, our strategy there. That's right. And that has a lot to do with just, you know, to, to zoom out a little bit. It's just the way that Amazon likes to organize its search result page. Like when you're searching for something, you're hunting. Uh, and then when you are browsing and when you're scrolling down on a product detail page, you're more browsing. So Amazon wants to present things on search result pages that are immediately relevant to what the person searched, whereas they are more likely to, to serve substitutes complements on product detail pages, if that makes sense. So that's 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 the thought and the strategy behind the low bid and then the large product page bid amplifier. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, any questions, you know, we're pretty accessible. So just write in, you can comment on the post and we'll be sure to get to you. Um, so Stephen, we've been working our way through brand analytics uh, and it's really, one of my favorite things about this is really how you can take this information and then go into your ad account and optimize it um, with like a bigger tool set, like a, a bigger tool belt, because you now have information that you just simply do not have inside any ad report or any section inside campaign manager. So it's actually really interesting. And I think we're just going to continue seeing this merging between organic and paid, uh, taking some sort of high level brand data and then 
taking that and, and figuring out how does it fit into a page strategy. So doing something like this once a month, I think should probably become part of our arsenal uh, at some point in quarter one. Uh, we've got a couple of weeks left, but I, I really do like this idea of getting on that product detail page in the sponsor products related to this item uh, because you have a higher probability to be purchased with that product. Uh, and then you can amplify that and sort of, again, turn that into that flywheel where then you are also showing up for frequently purchased with. So there's some cool synergies there between brand analytics and optimizing a PPC campaign, which aren't immediately apparent if you're not thinking about PPC like we are all the time. <laughs> yeah. The other thing I love about Costco is there's usually not enough seating area for everyone. So you just end up like, you know, family style with a bunch of strangers, just like sitting at a table with eight people you don't know. And it's, it's a good yes. time. You know, people are all in a good dude, mood. That, that, dude, that's another Costco strategy. They don't want you sticking around in the food court very long. It's like <laughs> right. leave so that more people can come. Uh, that's And the seats are always uncomfortable. They're always like hard, like metal that you're sitting on. Damn, Costco's got us wrapped they have, they have consumer, like, how to shop and how to buy things down to a size. That is a great first date spot, though. Costco, Costco oh, hot it? dog, yeah, right by the parking lot. That's it. Dude, it works uh, every time. I'll take your word for it. <laughs> uh, and with that, we are out of here. Uh, have a good one, everyone. Market basket analysis is pretty new. Um, so as you have thoughts and you're testing this too, definitely jump into our Facebook group or our forum or the comments or wherever. We're pretty available to our listeners. Have a good one. And we'll see you next week on the PPC Den podcast. Have a good one, everybody. Oh, oh, oh.